The prognosis for patients with advanced stage non-small cell lung cancer has definitely been improving over time. We were, we, we were first seeing this for patients with the driver mutations, EGFR and ALK in particular, ROS, where their natural history is a little bit different and they were often doing better anyway. But with the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, with response rates in the majority of patients, with responses lasting oftentimes a year or longer, we were shifting to patients living longer and longer. And with EGFR, with ALK, with some of the others, we now don't have only the first group, but we have sort of the what happens when that resistance happens. We have the next groups of treatments as well. So that's helping people live even longer. And we're still having chemo as an option. So it's not that we're removing chemo, we're just shifting it later. It's still an important part of treatment and it allows us to kind of add time. So many of these patients are living a number of years. For patients who don't have the driver mutations, the prognosis is improving because of the checkpoint inhibitors. Where again, those are not helping everybody, but they're helping a substantial percentage of patients, particularly those who don't have the driver mutation. So we've got the driver mutations figured out, sort of, we've still got ways to go there. And now we've got immune checkpoint inhibitors, which are helping more of the other people. So the kind of the whole group is shifting towards longer survival times. But it's still time that's often two, three years. And so as we have patients who are newly diagnosed, it's important to talk about what are they looking at. And when I'm meeting a new patient, so if this 73-year-old gentleman was my patient, we would talk about the fact that he needed to be hopeful because there was a very high chance he was going to respond to the osimertinib he's just started and that that was going to work for some period of time. And I couldn't tell him from right now if that was going to be six months of time, a year of time, two years of time, three years of time. You know, I try not to focus too much on that average because nobody ever hits the average, but talk about the ranges. And we would talk about the fact that after that stopped working, at this point we would most likely then be able to go to chemotherapy, and I always tell people not to be too afraid of chemo because that's a common perception. And that when the chemotherapy wasn't working, we would likely have something else, and we would continue, and new things would be developing until such time as his body was weakened by his disease, by his treatments, where we, we really needed to focus more on, on just keeping him feeling as well as he could for the time that remained. But we also talk about the fact that there's uncertainty, and so this is a time in the cancer diagnosis to stop and step back and think about what are the things that are really important to him, what are the things he really wants to do, what if he knew he only had six months, what would he do? He might not, he might have much longer, but he needs to think about it from that perspective so that he doesn't miss out on doing the things he would do if he did have that sort of knowledge. And then we go from there because everybody's journey with their disease is different and there's a lot of uncertainty. I also talk about the fact that just because that person's the one with cancer doesn't mean that that's the person in the room who's gonna go first because something could happen to any of us unexpectedly. So those are the conversations that we have, but it's in that framework of the prognosis. But I think focusing too much on one number is really not fair to any person because nobody knows specifically. All we know are averages from trials.